Hello and welcome to Reggie's Recess, where you get real talk about real relationships. Of course, I am your host, C. Reggie Rogers, renowned relationship coach, empowerment coach, author, radio show host, and television show host. And I'm always excited to bring you Reggie's Recess every week. I do my best to provide you with the best guest and provocative topics. So this month, we've dived into a topic that has been so much fun to do called Don't Be Fooled, The Awakening. Don't Be Fooled was taken from the first day of April where people see who can come up with the best game, the best gimmick, so that they can ultimately fool their cohort so that at the end of the game, the gimmick, the scheme, they can ultimately say April Fools. So that's how we got this topic for this month. April Fools. So we've had guests every Wednesday talking about Don't Be Fooled, The Awakening. So I just think to to attach The Awakening to Don't Be Fooled, it just goes hand in hand because The Awakening has all to do with being awakened. And when one is awakened, it means to, to acknowledge our spiritual nature, to observe our behavior, and to bring ourselves in alignment with what we believe is our truth. So it's a process. And the process to awakening involves, watch this, many awarenesses, many conversions and conversations, and yet painful confrontations. So today, my guest is Dr. Sophie. We do a recap every month on the month's topic. So we do a segment with her called Dr. Sophie Speaks. So I guess you could literally say that every last Wednesday of the month, it's her show. It's not my show. I'm actually her guest. So it's Dr. Sophie's show because we're going to do today, Dr. Sophie Speaks. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. And so we'll be right back after this commercial. Hi, I'm Ernest L. Thomas from the Waldens, and you need to download the Win Network app now, or else it's going to be tragic. Tragic! So we are coming back, and I guess we're going to have a little bit of, just a little bit of technical difficulty. We will be back shortly with Dr. Sophie. She will be with me very, very soon. But we typically do a recap. That's what we do. And the recap, we call it Dr. Sophie Speaks. We get her perspective. We get her imprint. And we see what she has to say in regards to the topic. She's very knowledgeable. I always call her. She's so full of wisdom. So she is the queen of laughter. She is the queen of wisdom. And so we always get her perspective in regards to Dr. Sophie Speaks. So we'll have her here momentarily. And if you have not downloaded the Win Network yet, I want you to download the Win Network. Go to www.winnetwork. Win Network. W-Y-N-N Net work, the Win Network. You can download that. And uh, I come on the Win Network Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you have not downloaded it yet, please do yourself a favor, download the Win Network and you can watch me Monday through Friday. But not only can you watch me, there are so many other programs there that are available for you to look at movies. There's 24-7. You can watch movies, talk shows, you name it, it's there. So let's see if we can get Dr. Sophie in. See if we can get her on. Uh, Dr. Sophie, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? No, I can't. Yes, I can hear you. (laughs) (laughs) How are you doing? 
fabulous. Thank you for asking. How fabulous. Is it in, in beautiful Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas is fabulous. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. That's what we. That's our yes. moniker. So I, we're doing great, great. Yeah. So we're on this. We're the same vein as you. We're fabulous as you as you are in magical Disney World. So hey, it's a good synergy there. So you're 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 in the magical kingdom and the magical Disney World, and I'm in fabulous Las Vegas. So I guess magical and fabulous I, they actually work pretty well together. I can see that. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you heard what I said prior to starting when you were back in the green room. I said oh, every Wednesday you might as well say that it's no longer Reggie's recess. Every last Wednesday of the month is Dr. Sophie Speaks. So <laughs> I am really just your guest today because it is Dr. Sophie Speaks. Our, our number one relationship coach is very humble, and that's what makes you more attractive, my friend. That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, blessings, blessings, and much respect and appreciation for your genuine, beautiful, and servant leadership. And I, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, there's a mutual respect there. So I'm going to take the back seat today. I'm going to deliver some questions to you, and I'm going to just sit back and let you work. Because oh, okay. I, I know, I know that you have wonderful, amazing, awesome responses to the questions that I will be asking you today. So we do a recap of the month's topic. And this month we have been talking about don't be fooled, the awakening. So what I want to do, I want to present you to some and introduce you to others. Maybe there are someone, maybe there are those who this is their first time watching and hearing you. I'm just going to let them know that they need to fasten their seatbelt because <laughs> the first question that I'm going to ask you today is we typically hear the phrase, uh -huh. In spiritual circles, waking up or having a spiritual awakening. So what does it mean to have an awakening or what does it mean to be awakened? Mm -hmm. um, at a very simple explanation, it is when you start seeking for more information, you're more wondering, you're curious, you're questioning things that are not clear to you or you thought they were true and you're not sure if they are at the level of growth and consciousness with your life journey and experience that you've arrived to. At a very simple explanation, it is the starting of the seeking and that's how things starts to unfold, unfold, unfold. And what happens is you feel that you are more awakened. The truth is, we go back to laws of nature. You know, I like to go back to creation. And, and when we're born, uh, the minute we come out, if we are not open, our eyes are not open, what are the doctors going to think you're dead, right? <laughs> and, and the fact that if you're sleeping and you don't get up at a certain time after many hours, even if you've been so exhausted, it's going to resemble there's something wrong and maybe you're dead, hey? So by nature, we are really born awakened to mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. Through life, through beliefs, through generations, traditions, culture, we get more conformed and we start to think and believe certain ways. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when things come to our life, whether they're opportunities, disappointments, or new experiences, uh, they could be either spontaneous where boom, something just comes up like an aha moment, and or they could be really in a painful situation that you wake up to a new re truth to it when it was already that truth, but to you, you did not see it. So to you, that's why it was painful. Yeah. Yeah. So once you start the seeking to find out, to learn about, and, and on your journey to that, you start opening your eyes more and more. 
And what it really represents is clarity. Clarity. So awakening really, really is what it's symbol of you being clear about something in that particular moment. And because we continue to grow and evolve, the awakening to one truth today may be some other truth down the road with your growth and understanding. And it's another look at it from a different angle. And you're awakened to that in the present moment. I want to make a statement and I want, I want to hear what your perspective is on this statement based off of what you just said. So in essence, a genuine awakening causes people to recognize that much of what they previously thought or understood was actually quite limited or partial, would you say? Yes. Uh, yes. It's absolutely a, a definition uh, that completes getting clear. Yeah. Because now the clarity gives you that expanded perception uh, from looking at it from a expanded <laughs> conscious perspective. I love it. I love it. And so there's layers attached to that. So when it comes to someone being awakened, um, and since you just went into the expanded perspective, and since I give dating from an expanded conscious perspective, you know, Mm -hmm. that's, I do my best to stay in that lane. So since we're there, when it comes to someone being awakened, how big of a role do you think this plays in relationships? Hmm. Uh, a big one. Let's talk okay. about that. Okay. Let's take an example. Um, you are known as a number one relationship coach, dating coach, and you have probably had a lot of clients who are coming because not because they are in perfect condition or else they don't need to see you. Correct. All right, but because they're going through troubled times with their partners and or or trying to find out how to date and so forth, because maybe they had maybe in the past bad experiences and they really need someone to guide them so they don't have to go through more suffering, so they can see things from different views. We notice a lot of the times where the disharmony happens is when one person outgrows the other. And if the person who's here compared to the one that outgrew them is not supportive to this journey or understanding, it becomes like me speaking Chinese to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I'm growing my vocabulary, my experience, my circle, my standards, my knowing is all going on a higher and deeper level. So, so are you growing or are you expanding? Expanding is part of the growth. And, okay. and we are totally always in that energy of expansion. We're born expanded. Yeah. We don't shrink in our consciousness. It's designed for expansion. Yeah. And when we constrain that, is when people start to feel stagnant and in relationships back to that question is that when the conflict starts to happen they don't understand or see eye to eye unless they really have very strong guiding principles that ties them that transcend the growth that one or the other is encountering. And a lot of times we find that in religious beliefs or cultures Mm -hmm. where the wife could be a little bit abused even verbally, emotionally, but she's hanging in there because it's against the culture to get a divorce or the religion or they try to work it out and all because the guiding principles are tying it together, even though one person can outgrow the person so much. But in general, about a role, it plays a lot because one person is going to feel compromising 
Yeah. One person is going to feel unfulfilled, yeah. uncontent, and that's where the disharmony happens. And I think there's nothing more frustrating in a relationship is when one person is somewhere, the other person isn't. So you have two people in a relationship, but then you have two people that are on two separate pages. So therefore, they can't they can't create the harmony that you're talking about, and so the oneness isn't there because there's what we call division. No unity, yes. And so, since there's no unity, there's no harmony, and there's that word called um, symphoneo, which is where we get our our English word called symphony. Mm. And, and, and in a symphony, everybody knows their role. They know their part. They know. Mm -hmm their note. They know what they're supposed to play in regards to the note that they're playing. So it's not a symphony. It's no harmony anymore. It's disunity. It's disjointed and there's disharmony. So there's nothing more frustrating to, than to be in a relationship where maybe one person's, and you talked about beliefs, maybe one person's beliefs has expanded into another area where they feel like they're now, they are now understanding some new truths mm -hmm. and the other person is what you call just a while stagnant and stuck because they don't want to expand, but yet everything around them is changing, growing, and they refuse to be a part of that. So when we talk about the awakening and how big of a role do you think it plays in relationships, it has to make a huge dent in a relationship and play a ginormous role. I used that word yesterday on a show when I was taping a show. I was doing an interview. I said ginormous. And she says, that can't be a word, is it? I said, no, <laughs> I just made it up. Uh, but, it, but it plays a ginormous role uh -huh. in relationships. Yes, yes. You know, uh, we have to remain flexible and adaptable. And, you know, the energy fitness of a person compared to the other, the interests and desires and passion through life journey of a couple that were so in love and they built a lot of things great together. But maybe at one point, one person got sick, they got on medication, their, their energetic ability to be, you know, in communication, in engagement is decreased, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they're going to get divorced because that one person had gotten so awakened and the other one didn't get to that level. It is really deeper than just the surface of what we're trying to explain. So I just don't want the audience to think that because, oh, now I got into this level, you know, I went on these spiritual retreats. I, yeah. I can meditate in a second and get somewhere. I'm in planet uh, Mars in a second. My partner doesn't even relate to what that means. My chakras are balanced. What is even that chakra junk? That's what they don't even, you know, it's, it's a gibberish to them. We're not talking about that. Yeah, they've gotten so deep and so... Yes, and you when know, you're awakened, yeah. it's the, the bowing to the light within the other person, the compassion, the empathy, the respect, the love, the care, the kindness. Just to make the other person better. And it's not to look down on the other one who's not there. Where it starts becoming a, an issue is when they're, this person who's not there disrespects the growth of this person. And that's where it can get toxic. Yeah. Because now this person wants to party all the time and this person is in a different interest and passion. Now they're having more fun with their friends than their partner with time, with time, with time, with time, with time, they grow apart. That's the type of awakening where the role can really make a relation much more dysfunctional, mm -hmm. not on the awakened person. And we're not saying the other person is not awakened. They're just not aware. They're awakened, but they're not tapping into their awareness and consciousness to all that. And that's where the role starts to become more noticeable either in a deficient or effective way to yeah. support or, or really disempower the relationship.
And it doesn't mean, and I think this is where we have to clarify so that those who are listening, it doesn't mean that one person's right and the other person's wrong. It just mm-hmm. means that maybe somebody is growing at an exponential rate a lot faster than the other. Because awareness, again, to me, it's a process that requires or that entails many awarenesses. When a person is awakening, it's this process that entails many awarenesses, many conversions, many conversations, and many painful confrontations. It's just where are we in the process? And then once we discover or determine or decipher where we are in the process, how do we handle if there are differences in the process where we find out where we are? How do we discover? I mean, how do we handle or deal with the differences? Um, And so I think that's very important for people to understand because awakening Dr. Sophie, is also uh, different. It's related, but it's distinct from enlightenment. Let's Mm. talk about that. Let's talk about that because, you know, somebody could come home and say, you know, they're they're now, like you said, aware, and in their mind, they're enlightened. So they've had this awakening, and then they, they have this certain attitude that becomes condescending towards their partner. Mm-hmm. And so now we have this difference. And so the energy has now shifted because there's no energetic flow there because of the other person so-called being more enlightened and aware and awakened more so than their partner. So how do you describe the difference between being enlightened and being awakened? Mm. Okay. Wow. Uh, and I think uh, this doesn't have a fit 100% answer to one way because it depends on, on your conscious awareness to this question. And someone might answer it one way today, 10 years from now, they might add to that and modify it. Uh, but on a basic level, I would say that you are not, really enlightened but maybe you are carrying enlightened values that make you behave in a way that is of enlightenment so the way i see it personally it is based on your individual behavior Mm -hmm. towards others the awakening is a process and it's ongoing every present moment but some are able to master and regulate their vibration than others Hmm. and that mastery allows them to stay in a way cornered a whole lot less time than someone who has mastered their vibrational regulation of emotions and making faster decisions when they are alert and alarmed of toxicity or I, lo- un- I, I, st- I love how you say toxicity. Uh, you can say that all day. No, <laughs> no one can say that like you. I'm just letting you know toxicity. <laughs> 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 what happened? Oh, okay. The accent. <laughs> All right. Yes. So uh, it, it is of that that will determine the response and our behavior towards the awakening. So it's an ongoing present to moment of mastery, vibrational frequencies, our internal dialogue, our way of how we evaluate and respond to life gets us back right on track faster and we manifest more frequent because we understand the process. But have you ever been around some people, Dr. Sophie, they be, you know, they get this so-called awakening and they Uh become awakened and aware and, 
they become so deep until you almost really don't want to go around them because everything to them, <laughs> everything to them is just so deep. If a tree falls in the forest, where does it land? And you're like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, where is this? You know, there's, everything has to become so deep and you just can't have what we call a common conversation mm. with them because now they are awakened they are aware and almost so spiritual that they just do not, they cannot no longer come down to the common level. Have you ever been around those type of people? Yes. And, you know, if we are too high in the clouds and or if we're too grounded all the time, both are not in harmony. Yeah. The yin and yang is a very good representation to that. And if we don't really realize the union and the importance of both, the darkness and the light, we are not going to live life at ease with a feel of breeze coming in our way as we go into our journey because we become so stiff and anal to one way and narrow-sighted only to that, that we become extra sensitive, less adaptable, and when change happens, reality hits, and life is not all that bubbly in your own bubble of light. And mind you, my DSD, spiritual, my doctorate is in spiritual development. I am very spiritual. I meditate. I do all that. But I personally like to do science and spirituality in combination to get logic and emotion because you see the bridge between the intellect and the heart is that intuition and that's the highest level of consciousness. But I got to have both to Balance. really get to that. Yes. So. Has it, it has to be balanced. So, so in saying that, do you think that a person, do you think that enlightenment requires awakening, but awakening does not necessarily result in enlightenment? Yes, because it's the levels of awakening. You yeah. see, you can be awakened to a certain reality and all of a sudden, and you might see that in real life, you talk to people who you feel like, wow, you know, and then they amaze you and five years later you see them they're so anal and doctorant into one way only whether it's a political view or religious view and now you're like is this the same person that is not able to just open up and 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 be diversified in in accepting and in in connecting and responding it's just like one way only and they don't want to they can't see further what happened to that how could that be but they weren't really consciously an expanded conscious awareness. They were awakened to a certain thing in an area that they had that awakening to. It could be an area of physics or chemistry or an area of metaphysics or, but that was the only thing. And then yeah. they're totally ignorant without any kind of understanding or depth to the other biology or the other geography. And then you tell them, where is, uh, you know, Somalia? They don't even know, like, oh, well, what is that? Is it a country or, a, a or is it a dessert? <laughs> okay. So now what are we talking about? Th Listen, that's, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this conversation is on, only you all going to get deeper and you that are listening. We certainly appreciate you. If you're following us on Facebook, we want you to know that you can ask us questions. Please feel free to respond. We'd like to hear your questions or your comments. If you're following us on Facebook live, thank you for taking time out to share with us on mm -hmm. this Wednesday. We certainly appreciate it. Some of you will be watching us today on Facebook live. Some of you will be hearing us tonight on 87.9 heat FM Charlotte, we certainly appreciate you that listen to us week after week on 87.9 Heat FM, Charlotte. And then there will be others who will watch us on the Wind Network at a later date, too, as well. So thank you. And we would like to say if you have any questions or any comments today, those of you who are watching us on Facebook Live, chime in. Let us know your questions and comments, and we will get back with you in regards to your questions or comments. We're just getting started. I have the privilege of having Dr. Sophie Nubani for one hour. Well, I, got, I get one hour of her time every month as we do a recap. And this month, our recap is on Don't Be Fooled, The Awakening, The 
awakening. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little break for a moment and we're going to come right back, but we're going to take a little break. I want to go into a commercial. We're going to talk about uh, some sponsorships and we're going to talk about some merchandise that you can be a part of. And we will be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Ernest L. Thomas from the Waldens, and you need to download the Win Network app now, or else it's gonna be tragic. Tragic! Again, if you have not downloaded the Win Network, please take the time to download the Win Network, W Y N N. That's Network. Download the Win Network. There you can get free movies. You'll have access to so much 24 7 programming. Um, so do yourself a favor, download the Win Network. Again, you can watch me Monday through Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Win Network. And I also want to share with you, if you'd like to become a sponsor for our show, you can become a sponsor by going to www.crogers, that's C-R-E-G-I-R-O-D-G-E-R-S, and go to crogers.com and click on the link that says sponsorship. Now, I want to thank you in advance because there will be some of you who will go there. And I'm thanking you in advance. There are three packages that you can select from. The first package is called our silver package. For $100, you'll get a one-man woman t-shirt, which we'll show you here shortly. You'll get a one-man woman t-shirt. That's for $100. That's in the silver packet. Or you can become a gold sponsor, which is for $250. You'll get a one-man woman tour baseball hat and a t-shirt and then if you want to take the highest level and become a sponsor because you're a baller shot caller and you're a boss <laughs> you can take this platinum uh, sponsorship for five hundred dollars where you get a one man woman t-shirt one man woman baseball hat a book and a workbook. What is the One Man Woman? Well, we were on a tour in 2019 called the One Man Woman Tour. And the One Man Woman Tour was all about empowering women to be the best women that they could possibly be. Now, if you look at that, you'll see the male signia and the female signia, which is male and female. And you see that it creates our, see that? One Man Woman Hour, which is tour. So it creates our. It's all about you saying you are a one man woman. If you are the man, you can get these for your woman and let them know that you are a one-man woman. If you are a female and you just want to order the shirts, it means that you are in agreement with the oneness and the oneness creates our, it's the one man woman tour. We want you to be, we want you to get a piece of this memorabilia from the one man woman tour, have a piece. And as we are going into the summer months, these Tank tops and these T-shirts, you get the V, very nice material. You get the tank tops or the T-shirts, and you can get the matching hat. If you buy it in white, you'll get a matching hat in white. Or if you buy it in black, you can get the matching hat. So you have two options. You can go to onemanwoman.com, buy the T-shirts by themselves, or you can become a sponsor for C. Reggie Rogers on the three levels. Okay? So take the time become a sponsor. If you like our programming, we certainly appreciate you being a sponsor for our programming. We're going to go back and our guest, Dr. Sophie. We we started this topic, Dr. Sophie, and I'm not sure, can we go higher? Because, you know, you got so deep. So you got deep, but then we went high. Uh-huh. So you laid the foundation. So, you know, when you when builders build, they have to go deep in order to take the building yes. up. So they have sure. to go very, very deep into the ground. So now we are building and we're going higher because you took us so deep in the first half. So we got to go higher now. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's. So from the first half, what stands out to you before we get into what stands out from the first half of our dialogue? I'm curious. Well, the awakening of a person and how could they reach to that level and, in, and be in that reality and connect with that conscious awareness. And once they are in a consistent flow 
of that of what they know with expanded consciousness that would lead to developing enlightened values those enlightened values are going to shape the character of the person and the way they project out to the world the way they assess situations the way they find solutions and solve problems and make decisions and really that is what you feel and when people say my god he's such an enlightened so you know you don't hear it very often yeah. but when you do what comes to the soul is a feel of wisdom ground being grounded calmness level-headedness uh, those kind of things that come along with the result of the awakening. Now, when you say, uh, you know, we talked about the awakening and the enlightenment, I want to make a statement. I don't see what you think about this statement, because I think enlightenment is really a state of being in complete um, alignment with all that, I would say, with all that is, you know? Mm -hmm. The oneness, yes. Yes. It's, because it's, it's a very high conscious level when once reached uh, it is another plateau of knowing that you know that you know that you know yeah. that brings you so much inner peace that there is no going back and that area you're in it's not just feeling the ecstasy and the blissfulness but the oneness and the being present with that oneness completely you are it you are with all your your you in unity and sync with all that is you are it i like what you said you are it and it is you and everything mm. just becomes and manifests because of the perspective but here's one thing i want people to really understand when you get into this place this place to me becomes a place of non judgment and I think so often um, when we get to a certain height and we get to uh, we, we get into this paradox of really getting an understanding, it's easy to get to that, you know, you're not where I am. I'm not where you are. So I am actually in a better place than you. But I think when the true key essence of being enlightened is not judging myself based off of another. It's uh -uh. appreciating where I am and having a love and a complete understanding that I'm only here because I've done the work to get here, but I can easily come from here if I don't continue to do the work to stay here. Uh -huh. So that does not make me better than someone else who has not chosen to do the work that's required so I feel like when you get to this plateau, it should really be a place of non-judgment. What do you think about that? I couldn't have agreed anymore. Uh, what is referred to in spiritual terms would be spiritual biases. And if you are getting to a place of enlightenment and you haven't worked on those traumas of childhood and, and really healing what needs to be healed, with your inner child, you are gonna carry that spiritual biases and you're gonna carry that judgment, even though you could be the pastor of a church, a uh, priest of something or the sheikh of a mosque or you know uh, any of those amazing areas of res spiritual respect for a religious uh, leadership, yet you have those spiritual biases and that's where the judgment still comes because mine is better than yours. Yeah. Mine is going to go to heaven. Yours is going to hell. Yeah. And we see that all the time. And that's not just in that plateau and politics in the same plateau of that spiritual biases where I'm better than you are. I know more than you are. You're no good. You're not in my standard. That is not enlightenment. <laughs> and that's it's not true awakening either. It's, so absolutely. I'm all for it. And it's a great point that you addressed. And it's very, very important, especially in our dialogue to our topic and our conversation today. Because I think when you get into this place, really, you, you get into this place where it's a place of where your truths 
are understood and your truths are somewhat resolved, if you would, Mm -hmm. you know, because because I, I started off by saying you get to that place of understanding your truths. And so now your truths are becoming more and more true to you and your truths are becoming more and more understood by you. Because you're seeking those truths and ask and you shall receive. Basically, it's about you seeking a truth for you to want to ask about or for or to something. And, yeah. and that's just all right on, like literally is just aligned in that path. You, you use this word seeking. And I think that if, if, if we were to park there on that word seeking, it would allow us to know that once you get on this quest to seek, I really don't have time to really judge what anyone else is doing because the quest becomes mine. Mm-hmm. So I am on this quest to seek my truths. So I don't have time to judge what anyone else is doing. I don't have time to really be condescending towards anyone else. I'm in a place of being grateful. I'm in a place of being, um, what would I say? Just not grateful, but I'm, I'm in a place of being, um, Give me another word for grateful, Dr. Sophie, because there's a word I'm looking for there. I am grateful and gracious and, and gratuitous, but there's still another word there. Um, with where you are at when you are in that space. And as yes. a creative mindset strategist, I am I always a uh, big time believer of the importance of practicing curiosity. And when we do intellectual curiosity and the seeking of, of that is for us, you are not in the space. You don't have the capacity, the energy. You see, you're replacing fear with curiosity. Mm. You're replacing judgment with wonder. So instead of me judging the person, I wonder what makes them think that way, what makes them behave that way. Now I want to study psychology. Now my direction of, of attention is redirected to a whole different area. And with that being said, that is exactly where you don't even notice, but those traits of character start evolving and growing and becoming stronger and they're they're rooted. And now again, we're more deeper because we're deeper and higher, like an oak tree. Like literally you go deep, 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 and you stand the winds of time and storms when you go high and stand tall and high. Now that is mastery. And that starts with vibrational mastery is truly being aware how to regulate your vibrational frequencies and emotions towards things. And when you don't take them personal, and you take it like a study, you're curious about it, the way you even assess it, it synthesizes versus you're analyzing it and you're turning it apart. Yeah, yeah. Because it's in oneness with all, and you're part of this oneness. So awakening can be a process as we've articulated this throughout our dialogue today. So since awakening can be a process, what would you suggest to someone listening who wants to begin this process? Mm. All right. Let me go into my own personal uh, view on this. And it's again, uh, different processes work different for people, but when you do have a process, it makes it easier uh, to follow a guideline. So if you're off track, you can assess yourself and see, first of all, you're going to start from where you're at now. That's a given. So you want to realize and be accepting and not judging to your own self because this person is there already. You don't know how much work they've done on themselves to get there. So they didn't come calm in one second. And some by nature could be more calmer than others. But you got to be gentle with thyself. you got to really, really be very aware of that. First is intention. 
Okay, you gotta forgive yourself for anything and stop blaming and the blame, you know, uh, blame and shame and guilt, all those emotions. You gotta forgive yourself internally so you can start on a really clean slate and set the intention. Set the intention, yes. We set the intention and now we gotta also trust the process. Just realize there's a universe within you. The way you're functioning, your liver, your heartbeat, everything is going while we're talking. We're not putting a button here. Okay, my heart, you got to beat this much or else I'm going to be dead or I need oxygen. Everything is working in just divine order. There are things that you are in charge and you have the ability to direct influence. And there are things that are already destined for the way they're functioning. And you got to understand that. But when you set your intention, you do your best. And trust the process and let God do the rest, the universe, your higher powers. Allow that to circulate, to immerse, to infuse. You're going to start to see signs. You're going to start feeling things. You're going to become more aware. You'll notice more things that you haven't in the past because the intention is set. So be intentional, trust the process, mm -hmm. and then you said be aware. Yes. Now, that is the key, because with awareness comes clarity. Now, mind you, awareness is different than alertness, okay? So you could be alert on something that's different. When you're aware, you're fully present. Mm -hmm. It's a practice. The more you do of it, the, the better you become at it. The more you listen to the unspoken words, the more you absorb the body language, the more you hear the sounds in the air. You're talking about something and suddenly you hear a bird tripping and you're like, hmm, it could be a good omen for some in their own mind because it was about <laughs> something or you know what I'm saying. Or suddenly yeah. you see a double rainbow on something you just finished asking for a prayer. Or It's just like you start being more in tune. Pay attention, yes. You get in You're tune with in your tune surroundings. With, yes. And, and what it is, we are all with this waves of energy. Just think about it that way. The more you're neutralized, the more calm, the less resistance and chasing you are to what of that you desire, the more surrender, the better you are going to receive. So it's surrender to divine will, trust the process, become more aware, and then from there, be flexible enough to know that there are times when things might not be as clear because that's your next growth. You don't just awaken and this is it on one topic. You continue to have that. It's an ongoing present it's in the continuum. present moment process. Yeah, it's, it's a continuum. And that's why I started off by saying this process involves many awarenesses and mm -hmm. many conversions and many conversations and many painful confrontations. Yeah, it's it's continuum. It's something mm. that continues and continues. So let me ask you this, Dr. Sophie, and we got to wrap this up here shortly. And mm -hmm. this has been so much fun. I hope you've had as much fun as I've had in, <laughs> yes. in this with this topic. But belief systems, you know, so many people have beliefs. And so we were talking about how, how does one start the process? Mm -hmm. So belief systems, you know, everybody believes in something and that's good. I mean, we're not knocking that, but belief systems. Let me ask you a question. How big of a role does what someone believes play in the awakening process? A big role. <laughs> a big role because you see awakening can be spontaneous and or it could be through painful experiences like a death, a divorce, or it could be through just you are in this little beautiful nature scene and suddenly have an awakening moment and it just happens. Now, if that happens, that's beautiful. Some people do reach that in that kind of space and, and realization, okay? But the truth is, 
a lot of people are not reaching the level of awakening that they are meant to be. They're already in, actually. What happens is their story based on their belief system limits their expansion and their awareness of accepting because there's judgment, there is spiritual biases, and now they're constrained and now they cannot reach to that level. When you do, if we were all at that level, we're not going to have war. We're not going to have separation as we see it today. We're not going to have a vote for a president creating a division of a country, for example, because we are going to be and let be. We're going to mm. respect either ways, and I respect your way, you respect my way, we still love, we agree to disagree. That's awakening. That is, that is when you are getting to those enlightened values that you represent with your character, you stand for what you believe in, but you also with the conscious awareness of respecting where that person's journey is at and what they choose because everybody has free will or else yeah. according to all religions you have heaven and hell and if that is the case then guess what there wouldn't be no heaven and hell there's no need for the accountability because we already know the creator knows if you're going to hell or heaven i mean does he really need a mark and accountability for you if that's the case created the whole universe and yourself but why is there heaven and hell then because you have free will, you have free choice. So if, if that by creation and laws of nature is applicable, then why am I or you or X or Y or Z trying to take that right away from that one human being? But what happens is when this one human being is forcibly crossing your boundaries and, and turning on your territory and forcing you, you got to stand up for yourself. And sometimes people don't know how to handle that self standing where they some people just walk away from the conflict say two to tangle but some just like you know what you're attacking me in my home my home i have kids i have a family i'm gonna stand up for my family and that's where all these little things happen but if we can reach that awakening with enlightened values yeah our responses on both parties are going to be so much different so yes belief systems in fact they are the biggest reason of hindering the the percentage of reaching higher levels of awakening uh, is because of that rooted beliefs that subconsciously influence how you think, feel, take, make decisions and behave and your attitude towards things. And belief systems can be generational. Cause it oh, just yes. keeps, it just keeps oh, passing yeah. from one generation to the next. My mama oh. believed that my daddy believed that that's why I believe that. And mm -hmm. then you, you instill that into your children and they, they, my mom, my dad believed that that's why I believe. And it just keeps going on mm -hmm. and on and on. And at some point we just have to kind of just drop the net for ourselves to see what we catch in the net, go out into the deep, drop the net and see what you catch. But we're afraid. And, and again, as you said, Belize has hindered the expansion and the growth because of being stuck. And um, it causes disunity and disagreements and division. You see, that right there, it's like a pyramid. The highest way to be, if you go into love and connection, relationship, you have certainty, then the higher than certainty is uncertainty. Very few people are comfortable with getting into uncertainty, which is taking calculated risks, smart risks, but they're not comfortable with that. But the highest one is the growth. If you can reach to that growth, is that where you are in that level of really the real awakening and, and the enlightenment levels that people strive to be at. But if you're at the level of certainty, you're always going to be conforming to a path that's more comfortable. You're certain about it because somebody you looked up, somebody you trusted was did well. They passed away. They weren't killed. They did right. So that's the right path for you. You feel more, you know, in line with that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it was the right path either. Uh, I agree. You use the word comfortable. So many people would rather rather be comfortable than accountable. Oh my God! And so, you, so you just said it. It's the comfortability versus accountability. Mm -hmm. And so, those of you that are listening today, maybe you should ask yourself the question: Am I just resting in comfortability 
as opposed to finding myself wanting to have accountability? And that's a question you can only ask yourself. And that's a question that only you can answer for yourself. Are you accountable or are you comfortable? Dr. Sophie, we've got just a little bit of time left. I just want to take this time to say thank you for being on your show today. Thank you for letting me... (laughs) Letting me be on your show today. I, I so look forward every month to being on Dr. Sophie Speaks. Oh, so blessing. thank you for blessing. letting me play an active role with you <laughs> today. It has been a lot of fun. I want to send a thank you out to our super producer, Stephen Sebo. This is yes. another Action Shot Productions. And I also need to say happy anniversary to Steve. Let's let's wish Stephen Siebel oh, a great anniversary. anniversary. It's his two year two Ooh, year okay. wedding anniversary, <laughs> and and two two is a good number. Let's just let, let me put that out there real quick. Two is a good number because two is the number of agreement. Why? Because if any two can touch and agree about anything. The universe is in the midst. God is in the midst. And so, Steve, two is a great year. That is the number of agreement. So if you guys can well, agree. You know, Reggie, this is, let me tell you, him having two years and we talk about one of them had to be during the biggest pandemic, new realities and adjustment and pivoting. <laughs> so we give him a big round of Kudos. applause. They got through 2020. Kudos. <laughs> it's been a test for many. Yes. And the, the, the divorce rates, the relationships going apart has risen so high because the people are not comfortable with the change. Their attention span is so minimal. Their patience is so minimal. Their frustration is high. And let me tell you, so kudos for Stephen. Congratulations. <laughs> They discovered, hey, Dr. Sophie, (laughs) they discovered whether they were uh, pandemic partners or they discovered if they were (laughs) pandemic problems. So they got through it and they (laughs) found out that they were pandemic partners. So thank you, Steve, for making us look good. I've got a close and here's my close. Listen, the spiritual path ultimately is awakening in our minds and the world we have constructed based on inaccurate beliefs. Our eyes and minds often deceive as when they tell us what the world looks like. Don't be fooled. Be awakening. The awakening is a process. It's not an event. And each person's path to awakening is unique. And you cannot force another person to awaken. Each person is on their own path to awakening. You guys have a great, great rest of the day. We will be back next week. Same place, same time. We'll see you again. Bye.